recycling plastics from trash to treasure with the Replast OECS Pilot Plastic Recycling Project brought to you by Unite Caribbean with support from the French Republic and CATS GIZ. Be a hero. Reuse and recycle plastics. The St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority is one of the partners on the Replast OECS Pilot Plastic Recycling Program. Ms. Emeline Jean, Information and Communications Manager, explains why single-use plastics are a problem in the landfill. She also introduces another R, that of repair, as one of the ways to divert plastic waste from the environment. The St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority would really like all St. Lucians to take personal responsibility for every bit of waste that is generated. Um, let us just think of it, if we, as much as possible, um, think of what we've generated and ensure that it is properly disposed of, very often, we as residents generate items that, that can be repaired and, and sometimes whatever is garbage for one can be treasure for another, wealth for another. And we would encourage individuals as much as possible, if there are items that can be repaired, please give them away, um, donate them so that um, persons can get these repaired. Um, so that we don't have them accumulating in the landfill when they could be of some use um, for an unextended period of time. Plastics in the landfill is not only a problem unique to St. Lucia. It is a problem in all landfills. Let's watch this short video by Emma Bryce on what really happens to the plastic you throw away. It explains the danger of plastics in the landfill very simply. This is the story of three plastic bottles, empty and discarded. Their journeys are about to diverge with outcomes that impact nothing less than the fate of the planet. But they weren't always this way. To understand where these bottles end up, we must first explore their origins. The heroes of our story were conceived in this oil refinery. The plastic in their bodies was formed by chemically bonding oil and gas molecules together to make monomers. In turn, these monomers were bonded into long polymer chains to make plastic, in the form of millions of pellets. Those were melted at manufacturing plants and reformed in molds to create the resilient material that makes up the triplets' bodies. Machines filled the bottles with sweet, bubbly liquid, and they were then wrapped, shipped, bought, opened, consumed, and unceremoniously discarded. And now here they lie, poised at the edge of the unknown. Bottle one, like hundreds of millions of tons of his plastic brethren, ends up in a landfill. This huge dump expands each day as more trash comes in and continues to take up space. As plastics sit there being compressed amongst layers of other junk, rainwater flows through the waste and absorbs the water-soluble compounds it contains, and some of those are highly toxic. Together, they create a harmful stew called leachate, which can move into groundwater, soil, and streams, poisoning ecosystems and harming wildlife. It can take bottle one an agonizing 1,000 years to decompose. Bottle 2's journey is stranger, but unfortunately no happier. He floats on a trickle that reaches a stream, a stream that flows into a river, and a river that reaches the ocean. After months lost at sea, he's slowly drawn into a massive vortex where trash accumulates, a place known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Here, the ocean's currents have trapped millions of pieces of plastic debris, this is one of five plastic-filled gyres in the world's seas, places where the pollutants turn the water into a cloudy plastic soup. Some animals, like seabirds, get entangled in the mess. They and others mistake the brightly colored plastic bits for food. Plastic makes them feel full when they're not, so they starve to death and pass the toxins from the plastic up the food chain. For example, it's eaten by lanternfish, 
the lanternfish are eaten by squid, the squid are eaten by tuna, and the tuna are eaten by us. And most plastics don't biodegrade, which means they're destined to break down into smaller and smaller pieces called microplastics, which might rotate in the sea eternally. But Bottle 3 is spared the cruel purgatories of his brothers. A truck brings him to a plant where he and his companions are squeezed flat and compressed into a block. Okay, this sounds pretty bad too, but hang in there. It gets better. The blocks are shredded into tiny pieces, which are washed and melted so they become the raw materials that can be used again. As if by magic, Bottle 3 is now ready to be reborn as something completely new. For this bit of plastic with such humble origins, suddenly, the sky is the limit. So you see, plastics are very good, as long as they stay out of our soil and our marine space. In addition to the two arms, reuse and recycle, Ms. Jean of the Solid Waste Management Authority also spoke of a third R, repair. Repairing does not apply to PET and HDPE plastic, but all forms of plastic hurt our environment. So, until we in St. Lucia are in a position to recycle other forms of plastics, if we can, we should repair them where possible. This has been part of a series on the Replast OACS project brought to you by United Caribbean with support from the French Republic and GIZ.